السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعزائي المستمعين. In this lecture we talk about analog and digital transmission. So in lecture three we talked about uh, digital data, digital signals, analog data, analog signals. Today we will talk about how to change, for example, digital data to digital signal. What's the method? How to do it? And uh, okay. So here we talk about different data conversion schemes, how to convert the data, different methods. And uh, we talk about line encoding uh, and uh, transmission modes. Okay, so computer networks is designed to send information from one point to another. This information needs to be converted and so on. So for example, Uh, if we see this uh, diagram, so this is Ali and this is Ahmed. So Ali want to send some data, some text to Ahmed, to the receiver who is Ahmed. Information stored in Ali's computer are like this ones and zeros. We call it digital. Data. So the data he wants to send, the text, is basically stored in his computer as ones and zeros. We call it digital data. But in order for the data to travel into cables, links, we need to change it to signal. So this data, we need to change it to signal. We need some tool called encoder. Encoder do what? It will change this digital data into digital signal. So now I have the signal. I use the encoder and I change the data to signal. And I send it through the link. I send it. I send this signal. Now, when it reaches the destination, the receiver, the, this digital signal need to be changed to text so he can read it so we have to convert again this signal into digital data and the device we used in order to do this transmission or this conversion is called decoder so decoder will change the digital signal into digital data and then Ali would have the data and he can store it in his computer and uh, say uh, later on he can read it. So this is line coding. What I have, sender will send data. We need to uh, change it to digital signal. When the receiver receives the digital signal, he has to convert it back to digital data in order to read it. Now we have general idea. So computer network is designed to send information from one point to another, from source to destination. This information needs to be converted to either digital or analog. So digital data or digital information have to be changed to digital or analog signals. So the conversion, we have digital data to digital information, analog to digital, digital to analog, and analog to analog different methods okay so digital to digital encoding now here we are we have digital data and we want to change it to digital signal or the opposite I have digital signal and I want to change it to digital data so I have here as I said before data we use encoder in order to change it to signal and we have three methods line coding block coding and scrambling. This lecture will basically discuss this line coding. So line coding, the process of converting digital data to digital signal. I have data and I change it to signal, digital to digital. Like for example, I have text, number, graphical image, audio or, audio or video, which are story, uh, stored in computer as sequence of bits, ones and zeros. So line 
coding will convert this sequence of bit into digital signal. It will change the bits, one zeros, to digital signal. This is line coding. So if I ask you what's line coding, it is converting sequence of bits into a digital signal. So at the sender, in the sender, data is encoded into digital signal, and in the receiver, we decode the data into signal, as we discussed here. So for the sender, we encode the digital data to signal, and for the receiver, we decode the digital signal into uh, digital data. So this is very easy. Okay. Line coding, we have different, different methods. How to do it? How to convert ones and zeros into signals? Like, for example, how I convert this to signal? I have different methods, and you will see. So, we have unipolar, we have polar, we have bipolar, multi level, and multi transition. In this lecture, we cover some, not all. So we will cover polar, unipolar, and so on. So let's jump directly to, to an example. See, first one is unipolar. What does the word unipolar mean? Unipolar, what does it mean? Uni means one. Polar means it, it's either in the positive side of the axis or in the negative part. See here, all signal is on the positive part of the amplitude. It doesn't go down. Okay? So it's just unipolar. In Arabic, Wahari al qutb يعني فقط في الاتجاه الموجب. It doesn't go down. Wallah? So, unipolar encoding means that it goes only on the side of the axis. So, in the unipolar scheme, all the signal levels are on one side of the time axis, either above or below. It can be above or below, but it's in one side. And if it's down, it will be all down, negative part. If it's up, then all will be up. That's why we call it unipolar, one polar. Let's take this example, and it's very easy. So zero, if I want find up one, I will go up. If I find zero, I'll go down to zero. Another zero, also I'll go down. I find one, I go up. The same thing if I find any ones. And then if I find zero, I will go down to zero. So it's very easy, very basic. If you find one, you go up. If you find zero, you return back. So this is very basic. So that was unipolar. Now we go to polar encoding. Polar means it can go up positive or negative. Both unipolar, uh, sorry, polar. In polar scheme, the voltage are on both sides of the time axis. You see? It's on both sides. It can use both positive and negative. The voltage level for zero can be positive, and the voltage level for one can be negative. So we can represent the zero positive and the one as negative. Different methods. Okay, again. So here, polar, I have different um, schemes for polar. I have uh, none return to zero. I have return to zero and I have five phase. So I have none return to zero L and none return to zero I. And I have return to zero. For five phase, I have Manchester and differential. Manchester, and we will discuss each of these, and we will draw them, so we, we understand very well how to do this encoding. Here, I advise you to bring uh, 
empty paper and pen and try to follow up try to uh, draw it by yourself okay so we start with the first one none return to zero l okay so here you see we are both in use both positive and negative okay zero is positive and one is negative so I start with zero, positive, one negative, zero positive, zero positive, one negative, and all ones are in negative, and then zero is positive. So it's very easy. But you have to remember zero is what is positive, one is negative, and you can draw it easily. Very basic. This is none return to zero L. This one is none return to zero I invert. Invert. It means when I find one, I invert, I change. When I find zero, I do nothing. So here, very important. Zero, no inversion, no change. If you find zero, you don't change anything. You just go straight. But if you find one, you invert means you do the opposite. Next. If it is up and you find zero, you go down. If it is down and you find, sorry, if you, uh, you find one, then you, you will change. So let's see here. So when we start with zero, and zero is positive, then you find one, so you will change, you go down. Okay, now you find zero, you will not change anything, because we said, if you find one, you change, you find zero, you just go ahead. So zero, again, we go straight, we don't change, we find another zero, we don't change, now I find one, so I will go up, I change. Okay, now again I find one, I go down, I changed. Again I find one, I change. At the end, I find zero, so I'll keep straight. So very basic, none return to zero. I, it's inversion so means one if it is one you change zero you do nothing if you find zero just go one you change you invert so it's very easy okay uh, the fourth one is uh, return to zero return to zero return to zero it means after anything i do i go back again to zero okay after any step i go to zero and there is transition that happen at the middle of the bit transition if there is any change it will happen in the middle of the bit not from the beginning, it happened in the middle. Zero means low, and one means high. So have a look at this diagram, return to zero. So I start from negative. Okay, I find zero, I go down. Okay, I find zero, I go down. See, this is the, it has to be like this. Where I, when I go back to zero in the la, next, in the last uh, part of the uh, signal. So, this is zero. Then I go back to zero. Then I have one, so I go up. By the middle, I return back to zero. I find zero. I go down 
and then I return back to zero. I find another zero. I go down, and then in the middle, I return back to zero. One, I go up. The second half, I go back to zero, and so on and so forth. So, means zero is negative, one is positive, and in the second half, I return back to zero. I don't go to negative or positive. I go back to zero. So uh, zero means negative, one means positive, and in the second half of the signal or uh, of the bit, I go back to zero. Negative zero is negative, one is positive, in the middle, I return back to zero. And this is the way how to do the transitions in the return to zero encoding. From its name, return to zero. So whatever I do, I go back to zero state. We talk about the last two types, which is Manchester and differential Manchester encoding. So Manchester, very easy. Just remember this. Zero start with the letter Z. So I indicate it like this, like Z. If I want find one, then I represent it as this. So opposite each other. Zero is like this. One is like this. Zero is like Z. So I start with zero. طبعاً it's bipolar. So you go down. Zero, we draw Z. Okay, now I find one, then it's like this. I find zero, I draw Z. I find zero, again I draw another Z. And then we combine them. I find one, then I draw like this. I find another one, so I draw like this, and then I combine them together. And I do the same thing because I find one. So I combine, and then zero, so I write Z. So it's very easy. Manchester means one, sorry, zero is Z, one is like this, and you notice that the transition is um, by the half. So in the half, you do the transition. Okay, so this is Manchester encoding. Return to zero. Differential Manchester is the same as non return to zero I inverse. You remember? Then return to zero inverse this one. So we said if you find one, you do the transition. If you find zero, you do nothing. The same thing apply here. Okay, so we start with the zero. So we start here with small transition. If you find this means that we started with zero. Presence of transition in the beginning of bit time means zero. So this one indicates we are starting with zero. Okay. Uh, the most important information here, you need to know that if I find zero, I will go to the other side and return back. You find zero, you go to the other side and return back. You return back. You do, you change. You go to the other side, but again you return back. This is if you find zero. If you find one, then you do the transition. So if you find zero, you will do the transition and come back again. If you find one, then you do the transition. You do the transition. 
let's see here you find zero then you go down and then again you return back okay you go down you return back you find one you will do the transition you find zero you go up return back you find zero again you go up return back to the same position you see you return back to the same position now I have one I will do the transition I find another one I will change I find another one I will change when I find zero here I will go down and then return back so it means that very easy differential Manchester let's say it again uh, zero means you go to the other side and return back return back so you return to your location yes you go you jump you return back to your exact place nothing change you jo just go up if you are done okay so it means you return back to your same position you see here it will return back to same position because it's zero this one return back to the same position because it's zero if you find one if you find one then you do the transition you do the transition so it's very easy you will do the transition if you you find one if you find zero it means you go to the other end and come back again come back to your previous location so this is very easy now after you finish this try to make uh, examples for yourself and draw the diagrams so you can easily understand you practice more and the more you practice the better you you will understand so this was the uh, encoding scheme you have binary data and you change it to signal digital signal previously we discussed about polar means uh, you have positive and negative you have we also discussed the unipolar means you just go on the positive part or on the negative part now we talk about bipolar what is bi what does bi mean bi means bi means two bipolar so i have uh, okay in bipolar encoded we, we call it multi level multi level so you have more than one or two levels there are three voltage levels here you have three levels you remember unipolar one polar two bipolar you have three levels so here we have three levels which is positive negative and also zero so the voltage at zero while the voltage level of the other element alternates between positive and negative so you start from zero you can go up or down so for bipolar we have alternative mark inversion and these are three types of them we will not discuss in this lecture how to do the encoding if you want you can do more reading if you want to expand your knowledge on this uh, regard so here in the previous part of the lecture we talk about you have digital data and you want to convert it to a, a digital signal now here we talk about analog to digital conversion so you have analog signal and you want to convert it to digital signal you have like voice message like this and you want to change it to digital signal like this so how can i change from this to this from this wave to this signal 
In this lecture, we talk about two of them, pulse code modulation and delta modulation. So here in pulse code modulation, what we do, I have like this signal, okay, this wave, analog signal, and I want to change it to digital data at the end or to digital signal first and then to digital data so what I do here I have this wave I cut it into smaller part okay like this like every few seconds for example every one second I draw a line okay so here is it I have big uh, wave I divide it in two parts we call it sampling here so the analog signal the analog signal is sampled I divide it into smaller parts and then the sampled signal is quantized I give it a value for example this one is 1 this one is 1.1 this one is 1.2 what is the value for each sample okay and the quantized value are encoded as streams of bits. Then these values, I change them to bits. So at the end, I have this. So very basic, three steps. I have wave, I divide it into samples, and for each sample, I give the value. And then this value, I change it to digital, uh, to, to number, to bits. So at the end, I get here. So three method steps. One is sampling. Two is quantization, giving it a value, quantity. Three is encoding. This value here, I, I change it to uh, bits. And at the end, I have this uh, digital signal. Okay, so this is pulse code modulation. Three steps, sampling, quantization, and encoding. Uh, so sampling is the analog signal is sampled every t seconds number of seconds like one second two second three second you give it a value okay you divide it you divide the big wave into samples each sample can have one second or two second or three second and then you divide the signal into t seconds T second is the interval or the period of time. How many seconds? Mudda. Interval. The inverse of the sampling interval is called the sampling rate. So maybe I ask you, what is the sampling rate for this uh, signal? The sampling rate is 1 divided by 1 by the time interval. Uh, depends and uh, different theorems here. Ackes theorem uh, it says that uh, the, to reproduce the original analog signal, one necessary condition is that sampling rate be at least twice the highest the frequency of the original signal. So the sampling should be twice as highest as the frequency of the original signal and use PCM also to convert digital data into an analog signal by using low pass filters so I have the digital data I draw it with multiple levels and then I convert it into analog signal at the end. Okay, the second method is delta modulation. How to convert uh, analog uh, signal to analog data uh, to, to, an, uh, to digital signal or digital data. So uh, PCM was complex. Delta is easier. PCM find the value of the signal for each sample. As you remember, we divide the signal into samples, so you have to find the amplitude for each sample. But here in delta modulation, 
you find the change from previous sample here you are looking for the change from the previous sample like for example here it increased this one also increased but here it's decreasing so you see the the change from the previous sample so here it's increasing here it's decreasing well, for example when it's decreasing we indicate it with zero but when it's increasing again we indicate it with one so it, this is easier you see i have signal i divide it into samples if it's increasing i indicate it with one if it decrease i indicate it with zero so at the end i send the bits one after another okay so um, at the last part of this lecture we talk about data transmitter transmission how we send data from source to destination data transmission ارسال البيانات طبعا I have two modes parallel data transition uh, transmission and serial data transmission serial can be asynchronous synchronous or isochronous okay we talk about this here today and it's very very easy believe me just when you see the diagram you will directly remember see here parallel parallel means a group of bit transmitted at one time i send more than one bit at a time i send group of bits at one time parallel يعني على التوازي at the same time i send more than one bit فهنا شوفوا this is sender this is receiver so the sender will send here whole byte 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 bits at the same time so i send 8 bits at the same time for the receiver هذه البارالل على التوازي at the same time you send more than one bit here 8 bit together so we call it this one we call it parallel how it's different from serial see this serial means you send one by one so you send firstly zero and then you send one and then you send zero 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 and then one one at the end zero so you send one bit each time here we have only one wire and each time i send one bit okay uh, when it reach it has uh, it reach the receiver the receiver now can convert it so this is it serial means send one by one okay parallel means you can send it at one time so this was lecture four in this lecture we talk about digital to digital conversion and we talk about line coding Uh, line coding you send digital you convert digital data to digital signal and we understand uh, unipolar polar bipolar and so on uh, we also talk about how to convert analog signal to digital data we use two methods the pcm and uh, manchester uh, sorry or, uh, pulse code modulation and the other one was what Allah who remembers okay this is a question for you so what is the other type to convert analog signal to uh, digital data okay and we at the end we talk about parallel and serial transition of transmission of signal parallel means we send many at the same time one means you send each bit uh, separately one by one so this was lecture four i hope you understand uh, the basic concepts thank you very much and see you in lecture five thank you